thank you so much for uh, uh, getting me here and uh, for organizing this deliberation. Um, I am uh, Monal, like he uh, introduced. We at Pyramid Foundation work uh, with uh, across the country with uh, <coughs> health, education, climate change, and a lot of such important uh, uh, issues and challenges. Uh, I bring today what we do in uh, education, uh, particularly with uh, seven states uh, 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 in the country. And a lot of uh, uh, what we thought is uh, I should be sharing some of the learnings that we have had uh, through our work in those states. So I just want to kind of first build uh, a scenario. A lot of scenario has been, of course, built by the experts here. Uh, but uh, I think uh, post-COVID, we've seen that uh, the uh, usage of internet has increased and uh, even it has penetrated to the rural areas and stuff like that. And you all know the numbers more uh, than me, so I'm not going to quote all of that. But uh, it is in that context that uh, I want all of us to just close our eyes for a second and just imagine uh, that one girl child who is from uh, the remotest uh, area uh, and jisko hum last mile bolte hai and um, you know uh, think about uh, what resources does she have uh, especially and what opportunities does she have especially because she may be you know the second of the three siblings uh, from a family which is uh, you know uh, socially and economically from a lower strata so just let's imagine that set of uh, children that we're talking about and I think I am primarily going to speak about uh, for them or uh, about them. Uh, so some of the things that we learned uh, while uh, we were running some of our programs and one of our programs uh, has been on uh, not on AI but on a lot of digital literacy type of work and uh, we realized that when we are talking about uh, the digital tools, a lot of it is to do with the access and usage uh, is to do with mindset, is a lot dependent on mindset. And I want to give an example of what we saw during the diagnostics uh, of that program. We realized that um, uh, when we went to the parents and we said, uh, Hum ek program chalane wale hai, pure state mein chalane wale hai, uh, this and that. And uh, would you like your girls to be, you know, daughters to be learning from uh, mobile? And the first thing they said is, na na, mobile uh, bete ke liye rakha hai, beta use karta hai. The second thing they said is, uh, betiyo ko dene se, uh, betiya kuch aur dekh legi, aur kisi ke saath bhaag jayegi. So that's the mindset. So while a lot of usage has increased and all of that, we're dealing with a mindset of a parent who is scared. And it's a genuine uh, worry. I mean, I'm not here to judge that. But it's a genuine worry. Uh, the second thing that we noticed was, you know, again, when we were running this program and uh, uh, you know, that was a go COVID times and uh, we fell into a situation where uh, the girls could not come to the schools uh, because lockdown happened and multiple times the lockdowns were happening. So we spoke with the education departments, we spoke with the principals, we spoke with the teachers and we said, let's take the tablets. It was a tab lab that we were running. Let's take the tablets out and let's give it away. Like we give uh, books like that. Let's issue tablets. And uh, the reaction that was there was, nahi, nahi, uh, parents le lenge in bachi okay, and then wo bech ta uh, To tell you honestly, we still went ahead and gave the tablets. We ran it like a 
like you do in library you know you let the girls issue and we set up some mechanism where we said we made the girls only uh, you know responsible for this and they ensured that in their village uh, a set of girls go through it and then uh, give it to another set of girls and uh, not a single tablet was lost it all came back <laughs> when the lockdown got over so i'm saying this is a lot about mindset when when you when we are talking about uh digital uh, or anything in education it's a lot to do with how we are um looking at uh, uh, at the implementation and how we are looking at the the challenge it is about the trust faith and keeping the larger purpose uh in mind uh, that's what we learned um the second thing that i want to talk about is again to do with mindsets and i want to give another uh, example where where the, how does the usage increase in a classroom i gave you the example of uh, uh, parents i gave you the example of uh, the departments and i want to give an example of teachers and i think when we started this work again a lot came back saying नहीं ये हमारा काम रिप्लेस हो जाएगा वी विल बिकम रिडेंडेंट एंड सर स्पोक अबाउट रिडेंडेंसी इन सम फॉर्म एंड वी वर्क थ्रू विद द टीचर्स एंड वी सेड कैन वी ट्राई वन थिंग कैन आप ऐसे प्लान करो कि आप जो सिखा रहे हो क्लासरूम में वो बच्चियां जब जा रही है आईसीटी लैब में तो उसके साथ मैच करो उन्हें आईसीटी में क्या सीखना है और उन्हें क्लास में क्या सीखना है इसको मैच करो और फिर हम देखते हैं कि आपका काम रिडेंडेंट हो जाता है या आपका आपने जो सिखाया है वो ज्यादा हो जाता है द गर्ल्स आर लर्निंग मोर एंड आफ्टर अ वाइल व्हेन वी स्टार्टेड डूइंग दैट एंड व्हेन वी कन्विंस देम व्हेन द माइंड सेट चेंज है द टीचर्स केम बैक एंड सेड हाँ एक्चुअली बच्चियाँ और अच्छे से पढ़ रही है और अच्छे से सीख रही है सो अगेन इट्स अ लॉट टू डू विथ माइंड सेट्स इज वॉट वी रियलाइज एंड वी लर्न आई थिंक द थर्ड थिंग वी रियलाइज वॉज इट्स नॉट जस्ट ए आई फॉर स्कूल एजुकेशन इट्स ऑल्सो ए आई और डिजिटल फॉर द एजुकेशन डिपार्टमेंट्स <coughs> and uh, i want to again pick an example from the same project that i was talking about um when we started using uh, working with the government and this is a whole state department that we are i'm talking about uh we realized that over the 15 years a lot of uh, investment has been made on uh, you know building the uh ict labs and the smart classrooms and a whole lot of all of that i mean today we we all know that a lot of uh, uh, states are way ahead in uh, you know investing in that however what we realized was that by the time it is start uh, people start using it in the classroom by the time teachers start using it by the time bacche wahan pahunchte hain by the time you know the ict in charge uh, starts using it uh and organizes everything the technology has to because it's a fast changing technology and uh, then the new procurement if there's a decision it takes about 2 years so I, and i'm talking about this program that we've been running since 3 years so i've watched it again and again now so that means by the time uh, the day we wrote the proposal and the tender Blah blah blah, uh, and by the time it actually came, that technology is already, you know, old. And what we have spent, uh, you know, crores of rupees, uh, the technology is already old. Uh, and we kept meeting with this particular thing again and again, you know, in the work that we. So the question in my in our mind was, uh, then probably. there is also a lot that can be done or that must be done in uh, using tech for 
improving the processes in the education department so that things become more efficient, faster and uh, stuff like that. The decisions are taken, you know, easily and much uh, efficiently. So that's the third thing I wanted to share. And the fourth and the most critical that we realized, and this is something that is very near to my heart, is that we feel that uh, it's actually time to reimagine education. I am saying it at a moment when this beautiful document of NEP 2020 is with us. Uh, great work that has gone through that and uh, extremely visionary document and I am still taking, so I may be the black sheep here, but allow me for that. Um, but I feel that uh, we realize that what is critical for this girl child that we imagined in the beginning of where, where, where I started speaking. What is critical for the girl child to learn? Uh, is it really, you know, skills like, you know, language and math and uh, the foundational literacy and then, you know, suddenly coding? Is it really all of that? Is it something else? What is it? And I, again, I want to just remind us all, I think some years back, a lot of us kept, uh, you know, uh, when, when this digital thing started, a lot of us said that um, in school, mein computer khola sikhao, band karna sikhao, Excel sikhao, you know, those kind of things. So there was this whole uh, thing around it. Everyone was rushing to do that. Uh, then suddenly it got redundant. And then everyone said, now every, everyone should teach coding. In Batroko, coding sikhao. But even today, uh, I, I have a lot of uh, nieces and nephews who have done coding as part of their university education and they're doing other jobs because that is already uh, redundant. Uh, so uh, this is running so fast that uh, the question we kept asking was then what is uh, important? Fundamentally, how do you reimagine uh, education, what is the most relevant for children today and then also in 2030 and 2045 and uh, uh, what is it that we need to uh, teach. So at the foundation, like I've been saying, we've been asking this question and uh, we landed into an answer where we realized that it is not skills uh, that are important it is actually sensibilities and what is also called as competencies and whole lot of all of that uh, by the education experts. I don't want to go into that right now. But sensibilities to take informed choices and uh, decisions despite thousands of good, bad information thrown by AI uh, and uh, the ability to discern what is right, what is not right, stuff like that. We also realize that it is about being compassionate and empathetic to all and to learn to live in peace and harmony rather than using AI to discriminate with others. Uh, and I think therefore the question for us today is are our schools preparing uh, children to be uh, employment ready with these kind of sensibilities that I'm just, I, I just spoke about. How will that emerge? Uh, I also want to uh, pinpoint a, a small thing. We really actually do not know uh, what kind of job market is it going to be in 2030, 2045. And really, I mean, I have done so much research around, uh, you know, skills and how will job markets uh, evolve and stuff like that and a lot of theory is there but really actually it's not clear. Uh, so we thought that the best is to teach those children what we now call as 21st century capabilities, some of the capabilities I just described and I want to pick the word from uh, what Modi sir always uh, speaks about <coughs> which is you know Atma Nirbharta. How are we going to teach uh, these kids become 
आत्मनिर्भर सो दैट दे मेक देर ओन डिसीजन्स आई थिंक सर कॉल इट कॉल डेट फ्यूचर रेडी वी कॉल इट ट्वेंटी फर्स्ट सेंचुरी स्किल्स आत्मनिर्भर वॉट एवर इट इज बट आई थिंक द आवर पंट हैज बीन दैट वी नीड टू फोकस अ लॉट ऑन दीज स्किल्स and uh, in the work that we do in the seven states we do a lot of uh uh this these type of skills uh through social emotional ethical learning uh we doing a lot of work in uh, aesthetic literacy and physical literacy and we doing a lot of work in uh, what we are calling as project based learning through which these skills are being imparted uh and for all of this we have also organized a lot of work that we do with how does governance uh, happen between the teachers between the uh principals between the education department officials uh, the state how do all of them get get involved in this and how do they use data to then figure out okay how do how do we take a uh, decision for uh, changing this are the are the children really learning these skills or not so how does that happen so governance data based decision making and governance and uh, we're also doing a lot of uh, tech based work around uh, what i just mentioned a while back process uh, reorganizing the processes or process re engineering so a whole lot of all of that we're doing and we i think uh, our punt is to uh, invest in this uh, call it out very strongly that this is the most uh, critical and uh, you know create proof of concepts in these states that we are working in state wide proof of concepts district wide proof of concepts so that everyone starts believing that uh, probably when uh, when uh, this girl that i was describing when she meets with uh uh with a question of um how is she going to make a choice about her employment she takes a more uh, thoughtful and uh, you know uh decision which she has taken she takes a thoughtful decision she is able to make choices which are uh probably you know more pro sustainability uh stuff like that so yeah that's from me that's the work that we're doing and thank you so much for uh, listening